Alright, welcome back to Holly's office and here's Ella. Ella Fitzgerald, as a matter of fact. Ella so, Fitzgerald. Yes. Yeah. So we call her Ella Fitz a lot. And so we thought we'd talk about animals and pets in books. Ella's the only gonna take so much of this. She likes me, but not that much. Alright, let me sneak. Okay, uh, when I make sure I grab the She's right gonna one. grab a book for me. I'm gonna Okay, this, oh, look, so this is the audio book. That's can you Ella. See Ella? Oh. There's Ella. Oh, oh she says, look, look at I'm famous. Ella, you're on the book. So Holly actually did have her dogs be the model and for the cover of was these books. Ethel Merman who Ethel, passed Ethel away Merman. last year. Yeah. Um, and I changed their name in the books, and the kids hate it because while the book was newly released, I used to say, you know, I changed their names in the book from Ethel Merman and Ella Fitzgerald because they didn't want She's like, the paparazzi hounding them. <laughs> yeah, my kids made that face yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But so she's famous. But there are, I mean, there are animals in a lot. Okay, Ella, you're slipping. Go oh, down. That was it Emma. for Ella. In a lot of my books, um, we've pets. always had pets. Animals. Um, I did one of my favorite pets in a book was, and we'll get the book and we'll take a picture of it, uh, How to Catch a Groom, which is coming back out this spring. He is a scientist you, who has a cat named Schrodinger. Oh, yes. And if you're a geek. So we'll get a picture. He came out, that book came out at, in manga in Japan. And the first thing I did when I got the copy was look to see if Schrodinger, the cat's in there. The, Schrodinger's in it. Fun. So I love putting animals into my books. How yeah. about you? Um, um, I absolutely have had animals. In fact, had a, a, in, in what was my first book, there were a couple dogs. The hero had a couple dogs and the heroine was terrified of them. Again, that was a thing, and she had a reason for that. Um, I know there was a cat, at least a cat, in, in at least one of my other books. Um, I, I think most, not all, but, but a bigger proportion of mine have had animals in them. And with the Everything But series, the first three books, Nana Vancey is trying to break a curse she actually put on her own family's weddings. And then when she was done, it's like, oh, you know, what, what is she going to do now? And she tries her hand at matchmaking people. And it, it just goes about as well as breaking the curse went. She is not good not at it. Not very. <laughs> and so at the end, and I don't think I'm giving up anything, so read the series if you haven't, but um, she ends up matchmaking people to pets. Aww. So she's done cameos in a number of books. Dana okay. Vancey comes in for a tiny little cameo. When somebody adopts a dog, uh, in Carrier Her Heart, they adopt dogs from Nana Vancey. And so I love that that plays over and over again in books. And then readers seem to enjoy seeing a character they knew and loved come back oh, in a new story. Well, I don't have to tell you how much my mom loves Pearly Gates. I know. And Pearly Gates, I wrote in my Perry Square series, there's a real downtown two block area called Perry Square mm -hmm. and there's businesses around two wooded parks and Pearly Gates worked at Snips and Snaps and was my wise woman in the series. She came in all eight books and had her moment of being wise in a very down home sort of way and Susan's mom does love her. And I've been looking for someone who might need a haircut. A place. That I can, I can organically her work in. Pearly yeah. Gates in because I know. A lot of people love her. Susan's mom. Yeah, really, mom. Nana Vancey and Pearly Gates are two of the characters who, and they've both been in so many books that they have their own little following. So I hear Absolutely. a lot from readers who love them. So, sure. But pets and books. Pets in real life. It's a thing. Pets are awesome. There you are. We'll see you next time.